Tony Blair advises Matt Hancock to extend the lockdown measures beyond the 21st of June, and new evidence proves that government advisers were wrong about some of the lockdown measures. Well, it's absolutely normal in a democracy that a former prime minister would still be around to, you know, get a job, maybe as an advisor or something. But Tony Blair, firstly, these days is turning into some of the worst villains uh, that we have seen in fictional movies and TV shows. Uh, but he's also very, very influential. He is regularly on TV and he is regularly advising uh, government ministers, including Matt Hancock. Now, when he was prime minister, when he was an MP, of course, people in this country voted for him. And so he had their mandate to do what he wanted to do. Now, as an advisor, like many others, uh, or lobbyists, uh, of course, politicians should hear from them, even Matt Hancock. But the advice that uh, Matt, uh, Tony Blair has been giving to Matt Hancock and the government, uh, and on a number of issues, not just this um, problem that we've had, has uh, been quite robust, and they've just basically just taken everything he said. Uh, we've said it, we've seen it from a, a year ago over the testing issues and everything else that's happened. But this relationship is getting a bit weird because Blair, because of his profile, a number of people in the establishments still take him seriously. Now, this guy, for some reason, is still obsessed with extending lockdown measures uh, on uh, his own website, the Tony Blair Institute uh, for Global Change. Uh, yeah, global change. Uh, he actually is advocating for the UK government to not lift all the restrictions uh, on the 21st of June. Now, some might start so certain theories about well, you know, the vested interests are involved and they have shares in certain companies and pharmaceutical companies. And there's also the other side. And it's more likely because these people ideologically, they always lean towards one way, whether it's on climate change, whether it's on this in public health, but on a number of issues, especially on economics. These people are control freaks and they want to centralize everything because they think they know better. Uh, on his website, Tony Blair's team have advocated uh, for the British government to actually delay the step four of Boris Johnson's lock, uh, roadmap. And he, they've also said that as planned in the US and Israel, uh, the program for the jabs should also be extended to the adolescents. Now, there is a number of arguments when it comes to the, the vaccine program, you know that, and a number of ups and downs on this. But the pr problem that we are talking about here is the influence that Tony Blair has. And the government advisors themselves right now, SAGE and the Department of Health and the NHS, they've been all over the place. There's no consistency. There's no transparency anymore. And all the, the flip-flopping and the mistakes that they've made, you know, one day back in last March, coming out to say that face coverings don't work, don't do them. The next day, when they had the supplies from China, they said, oh, face coverings work. Everybody should use them. And then the, the same thing with the outdoor, indoor, hugging, not hugging. This is why people were confused when they introduced the tier system. People people were confused when the government kept changing their mind. This is why I have a problem with this. Not necessarily if you're pro-lockdown or anti-lockdown as a whole, as a blanket policy. That's a different argument. For example, we have now been told that we are allowed to hug our family members uh, on the 17th of May. Well done. This is good. Fine. This is clear. At least there is some sort of positive uh, news and it's, it's very easy regulation to understand. You can hug people on the 17th of May, not 16th, but on the 17th. But then when you have Jonathan Van Tam coming out to uh, say, again, out of context, of course, uh, to say that, you know, hold the lines a teeny bit longer before meeting people indoors. And now, of course, when you say things like this, you have to be careful. I know these people are not politicians, but you need to be careful how you phrase things because out of context, that's the tweet. That's the headline. So if he's talking about the actual roadmap that already exists, then why do you have to even say it? It's part of the roadmap. Yes, we need to wait until May and then and then June and that's it. But if, if the government advisors are coming out to act like politicians, then someone has, should, has to take their job, uh, their, their role. Boris Johnson should say things like this, although he's also been all over the place at times. Uh, but the, the mixed messaging is not helping anyone. Uh, for example, we, knew, we have a new evidence, actually thanks to SAGE themselves, they have admitted that they were wrong about the hospitality sector. Uh, we've uh, barely had any uh, big, big spikes and problems 
uh, since the whole thing started in 2020, actually late 2019, uh, nothing happened in the hospitality sector in that sense. Uh, they told us that actually hospitality is a hotspot. That's where the whole thing uh, starts from. Well, now new evidence shows that retail and, and leisure centers and hospitality is fine, especially outdoor, especially football stadiums and uh, venues. Although, having said that, mixed messaging. They told us the roadmap is there, is here, and June onwards, uh, we could be free. Apparently not, because they're now telling us, thanks to the Times, that uh, if you go to the stadium, you be discouraged from drinking and also cheering. So you need to stamp your feet instead. Maybe, maybe instead of uh, clapping, you should do the jazz hands. That will probably help. But sports fans could be banned from drinking and encouraged to stamp and clap. Oh, yeah, clapping counts. It's fine. No, no need for jazz hands, guys. Uh, so you could clap instead of cheering on the new plans to make mass events safe for the summer. Didn't they tell us 21st of June is the end of the whole thing? Didn't they tell us that after the 21st, all restrictions will be lifted? But no, because the Euros are coming in uh, June, July, and then obviously August, uh, which we're going to have more sports events as well. Clearly, that's going to continue. Uh, clearly, uh, they, they have these plans to be so cautious because Tony Blair and people like Blair want to be cautious for some reason. And the government are now considering to ban drinking. We know that outdoor events, actual events, uh, have had they show no evidence of any spike. And now that they've, they've, they've done all these investigations, and we need more research, we need proper inquiry, international inquiry and domestic into the British government and obviously across the world to find out about all the mistakes and all the lies and all the cover-ups, especially from the CCP in China. Uh, everything has to be exposed so that next time something like this happens, in the next 10 years or whenever, then we don't follow the same route because it didn't work. Uh, now, the, the one thing one thing about the argument for lockdown as completely shutting down the country is one thing, but the small restrictions, you know, scotch eggs to, in order to have a pint or having six people instead of seven or five, things like this it have to be examined because they have destroyed not just our economy, but also people's mental health and just our way of life our basic human rights and civil liberties. Again, I've, I've talked about this over the last year or so about civil liberties, and some people think it's trivial. It won't be trivial when this thing goes too far, if things like this go too far. And if you continue to allow people like Tony Blair and other control freaks who want to centralize uh, economic policies and, again, climate change policies and everything in the world, then you won't have any of this anymore. Then you will see what happens when a whole culture and society gives in to centralization. Do you think countries and civilizations like Iran, do you think they were always dictatorships? Do, as in, do you think they were always under tyranny in that sense? No, including China, including certain other countries. Europe moved away from it historically, but because we discovered that individual liberty matters. On this channel, we'll keep you guys posted because this Blair stuff is getting on my nerves. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching. I'm Maya TC, and I'll see you guys in the next video.